वेलकम वेलकम एवरी वन वेलकम टू अ न्यू टॉपिक स्टोरी ऑफ एटम एज वी ऑल नो वी आर ऑल मेड ऑफ एटम्स यू आर मेड ऑफ एटम आई एम मेड ऑफ एटम द मोबाइल यू आर होल्डिंग इज मेड ऑफ एटम द चेयर यू आर सिटिंग इज मेड ऑफ एटम्स सो लेट्स फाइंड आउट वट इज द स्टोरी ऑफ एटम द फर्स्ट मैन टू से द वर्ड एटम वॉज दिस फेलो डेमोक्रेटस ही वॉज फ्रॉम एंशियंट ग्रीस and he said that everything is composed of small physically but geometrically indivisible particles he named them atoms from the greek word atomos which means that which can't be split so he said there are infinite number of atoms different substances are made up of different kind of atoms that is the glass is made of glass atoms paper is made of paper atoms wood is made of wood atoms and these atoms differ in size shape and weight there is an empty space between the atoms the atoms are indestructible and they are always in motion now many of them might not hold true right now some of them do but this was the first time when atoms were thought of next man in our story is this guy aristotle the student of plato and the teacher of alexander the great well his contribution to the story of atom is that he didn't believe in the theory of atoms he said that atoms doesn't exist but all substances are made up of five things earth which is cold and dry water which is cold and wet air which is hot and wet fire which is hot and dry and ether which is the divine substance that makes up the heavenly spheres and heavenly bodies as we all know this doesn't hold true right now but his legend lived up to 2000 years for 2000 years the word atom was lost to the world and thanks to this gentleman john dalton who brought back the word to the modern lexicon in the early 1800s he said that elements are made of extremely small particles and they are called atoms atoms cannot be subdivided created or destroyed atoms of a given element are identical in size mass and other properties atoms of different elements combine in simple whole number ratios to form chemical compounds in chemical reactions atoms are combined separated or rearranged we have progressed in our journey of atoms from this very vantage point this is the base from which we all started his model was also called the billiard ball model as he thought that the atoms are solid hard spheres like billiard balls now the atomic model has changed but whenever you see a model of an atom at the center you always find a hard sphere something to do with dalton In those days 36 elements were known and Dalton gave symbol for all of them according to him if these are the atoms of an element x and these are the atoms of an element y then they will combine together in a simple whole number ratio to form such compounds that was what Dalton's atomic model was the next man to look into the atom was Joseph John Thomson or JJ Thomson at that time he was working with this tube which was the leonard tube or the cathode ray tube in this tube uh, metals were given high voltages a metal cathode was given a high voltage and it used to show a visible beam the beam was called the cathode ray or at that time it was called the leonard ray now what he did was he put perpendicular magnetic field and perpendicular electric field in the path of the electron beam he saw that the beam gets deflected towards the positive charge and away from the negative charge also it is deflected according to the magnetic field strength this helped him to calculate the charge to mass ratio of the particles the cathode ray particle so according to the knowledge he gained from this in 1897 
he said that cathode rays could travel much further through air than expected for an atom sized particle also these cathode rays were 1000 times lighter than the hydrogen atom and the mass was same whichever type of atom they came from that is he changed the metals he used different metals as cathodes and he found the same q by m so he said that the rays were composed of very light negatively charged particles which were a universal building block of the atoms he called his particles corpuscles well you don't hear the name because the later scientist preferred the name electron which was suggested by the irish scientist george johnston stoney according to the knowledge sorry according to this knowledge j j thompson gave a new atomic model as the atoms are neutral so there must be positive particles in the atom to balance the negative charge so electrons have so little mass so that atoms must contain other particles that will account for most of the mass so he said that there will be a positive charge a big positive charge on which the negative charges are embedded he called it the thomson atomic model or the plum pudding model according to him it was a cake or a pudding on which plums were kept if you don't know what a plum pudding is you can identify it with the watermelon the red part is your positive charge and the black seeds are your electrons for this particular achievement he received the nobel prize in physics for the year 1906 and he was in the in, in his recognition it was said the great merits of his theoretical and experimental investigations on the conduction of electricity by gases now j j thompson's son george thompson also received a nobel prize so here is a quiz question for you which other parent child pairs also received nobel prizes please mention the answers in the comments below next fellow who looked into the atom was this guy the new zealander who came to england via canada ernest rutherford well he was the student of j j thompson and he supervised an experiment to study the atomic structure the experiment was such a hit that encyclopedia britannia considers him to be the greatest experimentalist since michael faraday and he is correctly called the father of nuclear physics at his suggestions in 1909 hans geiger and ernest marsden used fast alpha particles as probes a narrow beam of these particles was directed at a thin gold foil i am arriving at the famous gold foil experiment now the thomson atom as it was known could provide a very weak electric field and it was expected that the alpha particles would go right through the foil with hardly any deflection let's see what they observed this is the geiger marsden experiment or the rutherford gold foil experiment as it is popularly known a radioactive source was emitting uh, the alpha particles and a gold foil was kept in the path and a fluorescent screen was placed in front of it in a circular fashion so that wherever the particles will be hitting they will measure it so it was observed that most of the particles were actually not deviated as it was thought of few were scattered through large angles and some were even scattered in the backward direction now the alpha particles are relatively heavy and were fired at high speeds of about 10 to the power of 7 meter per second so only strong forces could produce such deflections also it indicated that alpha particles went through empty spaces rutherford actually remarked it was an it was incredible as if you fired a 15 inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you that was 
the impact of that experiment at that time. According to this knowledge, Rutherford came with his planetary atomic model or the Rutherford atomic model. He said that the atom was empty with a central positively charged nucleus where all the mass was concentrated. The light negatively charged electrons revolve around the nucleus just like a revolution of planets around the sun giving the name planetary atomic model. The radius of the atom was known to be about 10 to the power of minus 10 meters. Using the experimental results of this model, the radius of the nucleus was found to be about 10 to the power of minus 14 meters. Well, Rutherford didn't stop at that. In the mid 1910s, he carried out further studies and was the first to discover proton he used this name for the hydrogen nucleus. Protons mean first in Greek. And let me tell you, Ernest Rutherford did receive a Nobel Prize, but he didn't receive the Nobel Prize for all this work. He received the Nobel Prize in chemistry for the year 1908 for his investigations into the disintegration of elements and the chemistry of radioactive substances that he had carried out in McGill University, Canada and Cavendish Laboratory, England. All this great work was done after he received the Nobel Prize. Such a great man. And he was in his own humor when he said that the fastest transformation he had ever encountered was his own instant one from physicist to chemist. Now we will shift to the theoretical aspects of the atom. The man who looked into it theoretically and gave a model was Niels Bohr. He was influenced by Ernest Rutherford, Albert Einstein and Max Planck. So he improved the planetary Rutherford model by using quantum physical interpretations like the Planck's theory of radiation. The Redbus formula for spectral lines of atomic hydrogen couldn't be explained using Rutherford atom as it showed different lines whereas for the planetary model it should have shown only one single line. So Bohr gave four postulates. His first postulate was the electron revolves around the nucleus in circular orbits. The orbit of the electron can take on the spatial value of the radii. In these orbits the electron does not radiate. These orbits are called stationary orbits. So the electron, if it stays in that orbit, will not radiate. That is the Bohr's atomic model. Next, the third postulate was, the energy of the atom has definite value in a given stationary orbit. The electrons are allowed to jump from one stationary orbit to another. If an electron jumps from an orbit of higher energy E2 to an orbit of lower energy E1, it will emit a photon of radiation having frequency nu, which is given by this equation. The famous equation you must have seen. In the stationary orbits, the angular momentum of the electron about the nucleus is always integral multiple of Planck's constant divided by q pi, that is h cross, that is the angular momentum is quantized. This is called the Bohr's quantization rule. Bohr received the Nobel Prize in 1922 for his services in the investigation of the structure of atoms and of the radiation emanating from them. Bohr was such an important person that when the World War II started, he was one of the first to be evacuated from Copenhagen. He was also one of the chief architects of the nuclear bomb or the project as it is popularly known as the Manhattan Project. Next guy is this guy, Erwin Schrodinger. He was an Austrian physicist and is popularly known for his Schrodinger cat thought experiment. Well, we are not going to look into the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, but you might look into it. It's a very interesting thought experiment. We will look what he did for the wave theory or the atomic theory. Sorry, 
is so uh, famous with his wave theory that uh, it just slipped out of my mouth. Schrodinger theorized that waves can be used to describe electrons in atoms. This model depicts the floating motion of the electrons rather than them having a set path of travel. So Bohr's orbits were fixed. He said that they will have a floating motion. He determined the probability location of electrons in atoms. According to Schrodinger, electrons stuck in their orbits would set up standing waves. He stated that the position of the electron is probable and not definite. So we were moving from the fixed stationary orbits to orbits which are probable but not definite. That is the orbit cannot be defined in a rigid way. The distributions of these probabilities will form areas of space about the nucleus and these spaces were called the orbitals. Some of the orbitals are shown in the figure. So uh, an orbital is basically a wave function describing the state of a single electron in an atom. Before we move to the atomic model that was uh, derived out of Schrodinger's wave theory, we have to look into another great scientist, one of my favorites, Werner Heisenberg. Werner Heisenberg was a young scientist and one of the uh, biggest genius the world has ever seen. He was the proponent of the uncertainty principle. The uncertainty principle states that it is not possible to obtain precise values of both position and momentum of a particle at the same time. He determined that the only way to describe the location of an electron is through probability distribution. That is, you can give a probability of where the atom will be, not the exact place. Just that Schrodinger did it with wave theory, Heisenberg did it with mathematical models. This principle forms the basis of the electron cloud model. This is the quantum mechanical atomic model or the electron cloud model. On the left is a ground state atom and on the right is an excited state atom. The model is based on the theories of both Schrodinger and Heisenberg. The quantum mechanical model does not define the exact path of an electron but rather predicts the odds of the location of the electron. This model can be portrayed as a nucleus surrounded by an electron cloud. Where the cloud is most dense, the probability of finding the electron is greatest and conversely, the electron is less likely to be in a less dense area of the cloud. That is, electron is somewhere around the proton, it is there, but we don't know where exactly it is. It is in a probability space. Heisenberg received the Nobel Prize in Physics for the year 1932 for the creation of quantum mechanics, the application of which has inter alia led to the discovery of the allotropic forms of hydrogen. Schrodinger also received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1933 with another genius, Paul A. Dirac, for the discovery of new productive forms of atomic theory. Now, the atom, it seemed that it was complete. It had a positive charge, it had a negative charge. We know where the negative charge was, we know where the positive charge was. But there were few other experiments that were going on with the atom and they were not consistent with the atomic model. The atomic model was not able to justify these answers. In 1930, German physicist Walter Bothe and Herbert Becker found that the alpha particles emitted from polonium when bombarded on beryllium produces an uncharged radiation which has energy enough to penetrate lead. This couldn't be explained using the existing atomic model. In 1932, Irene and Frederick Joliot Curie discovered that the radiation could knock out protons of energy 5.7 MeV out of a paraffin slab. That was a huge energy. They assumed this unknown radiation to be that of gamma rays. So the gamma rays was supposed to be having energy of about 55 MeV, but that kind of an energy was not 
possible from interaction of alpha particles with beryllium. At that time, a young Italian physicist, Ettore Majorana, suggested that the radiation could be composed of a new neutral particle. And it was coming from the atom. One fellow who jumped into it was this gentleman from England, James Chadwick. Assisted by Norman Feeder, Chadwick quickly performed a series of experiments showing that the gamma ray hypothesis was not possible. He instead proposed that neutral particles with the same mass as the proton are responsible. In this case, an energy of 5.6 MeV is required, which is possible. The chargeless particle having mass nearly equal to the proton was called as neutron. James Chadwick received the Nobel Prize in Physics for the year 1935 for the discovery of the neutron. James Chadwick was the student of Ernest Rutherford. So J.J. Thompson discovered electron. His student Ernest Rutherford discovered proton. And James Chadwick, the student of Ernest Rutherford, discovered neutron. So we arrive at this atomic model. The protons and neutrons forming the nucleus and an electron cloud around it. We may say that we have arrived at the end, but I would say it is just the beginning. As one of my friends used to say, if there is a book of particles, proton, neutron and electron will just form the first three pages. There will be lot many pages to read after that. I would suggest that you go and read a lot about the other nuclear particles. You might have heard about mesons, muons, taons. You might have heard about quarks. Read about them. The bosons. The other uh, bosons like the W boson, the Z boson. Even the famous Higgs boson. I would suggest you read. You read, you try to know because at the end of the tunnel, there is always light. And that is the light which we strive for. And in due course, you might receive one of the most important and coveted awards of your life. If you do great in your life, in the fields of physics and chemistry, this is the coveted prize, the Nobel Prize. As you might have seen, from J.J. Thompson to Jamie Chadwick, all have received Nobel Prizes. There are so many other people who have received them. That is one of the biggest awards. It is one of the biggest encouragements you can have. So, read and read as much as you can. Try to understand as much as you can. Stay healthy, stay safe. Till the next video, thank you.